chapter 7, verses 27 and 28. It says there, Who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. See, the, the, the high priest, according to the old system, had to go in year by year on the Day of Atonement. And they had to, first of all, offer a sacrifice for their own sin before they could be qualified to offer a, 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 a sacrifice for the sins of the people. But Christ went into heaven with His own blood once to offer a sacrifice that would be forever effective to take away the sins of man. It stands before the throne of God forever effective for anyone who will come to Christ and appeal to Christ as their mediator, as their high priest, as the one who made the sacrifice for their sins will give themselves over to Him in faithful service, then that one-time offering stands effective before the throne of God forever. It never has to be repeated. He is our ever-effective high priest. In verse 28 it says, For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son, who is consecrated forevermore the efficacy of his mediation will never wear off it will never grow old it will never change it will always stand before the throne of God effective for the cleansing of our sins it was a one time sacrifice that was made for all mankind in chapter 9 and verse 25 the Hebrews writer hits on this again when he says, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. One time, one sacrifice. One sacrifice forever effective. You see... Uh, there in Hebrews chapter 9, verses 25 and 26, that Jesus has done His work. Jesus has accomplished His work as the mediator for the sins of mankind. And it says that He sat down. You know, you sit down when you're finished. He sat down at the right hand of God. His work of mediation having been completed. Now it is up to us to appeal to the efficacy of that sacrifice for the remission of our sins, for the uh, 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 price of our sins. That sacrifice stands forever effective before the throne of God, but it will only be effective for me if I make appeal to its, to its efficacy. It was a one-time sacrifice forever. Over in chapter 8, beginning with verse 1, the Hebrews writer shows there that he is our substantial high priest. That is, uh, all of these uh, uh, shadows and types and, and uh, 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 figures of the Old Testament, they are all made substantial in him. He fulfilled all of them and brought them all to uh, uh, their, their fulfillment when he brought into being what they pointed to. He is the substance. They are the shadow. He is the fulfillment. They are the prophesying. And so, he is our substantial high priest. You see there in uh, chapter 8, beginning with verse 1, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices, wherefore it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, 
seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. So, you see, he is the substance where those Old Testament figures were the shadow. Christ is the substance. Notice again in chapter 9 and verse 11. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. See, His is the substance. His is the real thing, not the, not the shadow of better things to come. His is the better thing to come. He is our substantial <coughs> high priest, not our shadowy high priest. As we see over uh, in uh, chapter 9 and verse 12 continuing. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by His own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption. One time sacrifice. Forever effective. The substantial sacrifice. All of those uh, 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 animals, all of those bulls and goats, all of that blood. Can you imagine? The amount of blood that was spilled through all of those years of the Old Testament system where they had their daily sacrifices, they had their Sabbath sacrifices, they had their new moon sacrifices, they had their day of atonement sacrifices, and the blood and the blood and the blood and the blood and all of that blood. The only thing that made any of it, one drop of it, effective for anything, is that it pointed forward to the blood of Christ. So that when they faithfully obeyed the command of God for them, the blood of Christ was giving it efficacy to do what God said it would do. Without the blood of Christ, without the substance, none of it would have been worth a thing. And all of that blood pointed forward to the cross of Christ. To the one time sacrifice that would forever remain. And would fulfill all of these types and shadows. Notice. The Hebrews writer says. That he is our enabling high priest. In chapter 10 beginning with verse 19. It says there. Having therefore brethren. Be a boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having an high priest for uh, having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart, notice it, in full assurance. He he says, because Christ is our high priest, we can come boldly before the throne of grace. We can enter in with full assurance. That's what the boldness means. We can enter in with full assurance that because we have this enabling high priest, we have the right to be there. We have access to the throne room of God by the mediation of our enabling high priest. Now, who else? What other high priest throughout the ages of man could say that they could give you access right into the throne room of God? He is our enabling high priest. We can go before the throne of God and as Peter says, we can make our prayers and supplications and and concerns and sorrows known to the highest throne, the highest authority, the highest power. The most effective means of receiving the aid we need. Because we have an enabling high priest that gives us access 
to the throne of God. The Hebrews writer 